Oh my god, this might be the best summon ever. Jesus Christ. All right, guys, so these are the absolute best Spirit Ashes, in my opinion, in Elden Ring. They're going to help you out massively in battles, and I've also included their location so you can go and grab them for yourself. Okay, first off, we have Omen Killer Rollo. Now, this guy is an absolutely massive maniac, and he wields dual cleavers, which do insane damage especially when you level him up. You don't even really need to help him. He'll literally kill everyone for you. This roller you see here, I haven't even le leveled him up. So this is him on level one. Imagine him on, you know, plus 10. It's going to be crazy. On top of the cleavers, he also breathes fire, which as you can see, is a great area of effect attack. What I like to team this up with is a Swarm of Flies, which is the red attack you see me doing here. A swarm of Flies slows down enemies, making it even easier for Rollo to attack them. You can unleash multiple swarms of flies, and the, the flies will go over and track enemies and slow them down. So yeah, that's really useful. I like doing that. Uh, the backstory of Rollo is that he's the first omen killer. He was once a famous perfumer, then he drank a potion to rid himself of emotion, which he needed to do in order to go and hunt omen. He's got the highest FP demands of any summon that you're going to see in this video, so you will need 113 FP to summon him. So uh, do keep that in mind. Uh, to get your hand on Omen Killer Rollo, you have to be a boss called the Fell Twins. The Fell Twins are found in the capital outskirts. One of them wields an axe set on fire, while the other one flights, sorry, fights with a flaming longsword. So beat this boss, and Omen Killer Rollo is yours. Next up, we have Lutal the Headless, and she's a legendary summon. She wields a lance, which causes buildup of the instant death status effect, and has heavy armor and a great shield, which makes her a really great tank. But a tank with incredible range, since she can literally teleport around doing a mix of melee and ranged attacks, so yeah, really, really good this one. It doesn't really matter what build you have, she's going to be giving you amazing damage support regardless. And at the same time, due to her teleporting, she can cover ground insanely quickly and get out of the way of enemies surrounding her. Keep in mind that you will need 104 FP to summon her. She'll do even more damage when you upgrade her, which you can do by using Glove Warts. Click the video above if you want to find out where you can get loads of Glove Warts really quickly. I like the backstory of uh, Lutil the Headless as well. She's basically the spirit of a headless knight who leads the mausoleum soldiers, who are headless knights that have willingly beheaded themselves to follow and serve their masters in death. Yes, they literally chop their own heads off. You, and you can find mausoleum knights in the consecrated snowfields. So Lutil sacrificed her life because she wanted to protect a soulless demigod and earn the hero's honor of an Erd Tree burial. That's all according to the description. And I would say fighting like this, she's definitely earned it. You can find her spirit ashes by beating the boss of the Tomb Sword Catacombs, which are found in the west of the Weeping Peninsula. Another summon who you should definitely make sure to get is the Skeletal Militiaman. Now, these guys don't do as much damage as the previous two summons we've seen, but they've got one thing that no one else does, and that's the ability to regenerate themselves. Just like with regular skeleton enemies in the game, they'll keep coming back after they've been killed. When their health bar depletes, they'll collapse into a pile of bones on the floor before gathering themselves up and continuing the fight. If they take a hit while on the floor, then they will be gone for good, but it doesn't really happen all that much, which makes this summon really good for absorbing loads of enemy attacks while you can get around the back of enemies and do damage that way. And a cool, little, a cool little extra thing you can try is increasing the amount of skeletons. To do that, get the Rosas's Axe. This axe has a unique weapon skill that summons three more skeletons, so that makes for a total of five skeletons on the battlefield. And you can add even more skeletons with the sorcery that lets you summon skeletons. So you've got the spirit ashes, you've got the axe, and you've got the sorcery, and these are all adding skeletons to the battlefield. You can pick up the Skeletal Militiamen Spirit Ashes by defeating the Tibia Marina, who is found in Summon Water Village. As for the axe, you can find that behind a stone sword key door in the Black Knife Catacombs. All right, so another Spirit Ash I'm really into are the Land Squares. These guys, they're pretty underrated because they function a bit differently to other Spirit Ashes. They don't really move. What they do is sit there and block attacks for you. So you can sort of use them as a defensive wall. At the same time, they'll be unleashing a cloud of poison gas on enemies, which slowly depletes their 
their health, as poison tends to do. Uh, upgrade the land squirts and they'll tank more damage, meaning they'll stick around for longer. Now then, not as exciting as something like Omen Killer Rollo, but they're definitely worth giving the land squirts, uh, you know, definitely worth trying them out and testing out their poison-based fighting style. So, see if that works for you. Their FP cost is zero, which is good, but you will need 240 HP to summon them. You can find the land squirts spirit ashes in southeast Lyanna of the lakes. Just follow the shoreline to the spirit ashes. Next up, here's a spirit ash I also like. That's uh, Stormhawk Dean. It might be pronounced Dina. It's got an H on the end, but this summon is insanely quick and nimble, able to swoop in, attack, and then get right out of range. And being off the ground, it's much more evasive and harder to hit than a regular old Spirit Ash with two legs firmly on the floor. As the description for Stormhawk Dean goes, this is the spirit of a fierce hawk. Now, this hawk faithfully rendered lifelong service to the old king of Stormvale long ago when the true storm raged. Its cries embolden its fellows in battle and the tempestuous winds that encircle it shred through foes. I mean, I wouldn't really want to fight this thing. Uh, Stormhawk Dean only costs 47 FP to summon, which is very cheap, although you will need a stone sword key to find this summon. So to get it, what you need to do is head to the four Belfries, which is here, and then you put the stone sword key in this imp statue. This unlocks a waypoint to the Chapel of Anticipation. Once there, you'll see this boss. Now, you can find the boss if you want, it's not really that tough, but if you want to do the quick option, run away from the boss and follow this route to a chest. Open the chest and inside will be the Stormhawk Dean Spirit Summon. The next Spirit Ash, which I don't think gets talked about enough, is one called Night Maiden and Sword Stress Puppets. These come as a pair and they work really well together, mainly because they're so darn quick. One of them has a whip to attack from range and the other has a dagger which they will use to slash multiple times in quick succession. They're really good at surrounding the enemy and attacking from both sides and since they're so fast, they're stunning enemies so they literally can't hit back. It's so satisfying to watch them stun lock enemies, I just love how they uh, how they fight. It's almost like they had a little chat to work on their strategy beforehand because their tactics, they, they're actually pretty Pretty impressive and then throw in the fact that you're also waiting and then doing damage and you start to feel a tiny bit sorry for whoever's on the receiving end you can find night maiden and sword stress puppets in noxtella eternal city now these are a bit more complicated to get to than most other summons so first you will need to progress through rani's quest line up to the point where she tells you to go and get the finger slayer blade this blade is in night's sacred ground once you've given her that she'll give you the carrion inverted statue which you can use to unlock the Carrion Study Hall Dungeon. Complete that and a waypoint will unlock at the top of Renner's Rise. Not Rani's Rise, but Renner's Rise, which is right next to it. Use the waypoint there to teleport to Ain't Salt River, Maine. From here, you can run to Noxtella Eternal City, where you will find the chest containing this summon. It's protected by two swordstress enemies, but you can kill these easily enough and then loot the chest. All right, so last on the list of the best summons you should try in Elden Ring, it has to be the Mimic Tear. Everyone loves the Mimic Tear, and that's for a very good reason. Now, it has been nerfed recently. The 1.03 patch did reduce its damage. If you didn't know about the Mimic Tear, it basically summons a clone of your character. Whatever armor you've got on, whatever weapons you've got, skills, talismans, etc., the Mimic Tear will use it. So essentially, you're teaming up with yourself. But despite that, it's still an amazing summon. I love the Mimic Tear. I trust it more than I trust myself. A cool little trick you can do to customize your Mimic Tear is equipping whatever weapon you want it to use, summoning it, then changing your weapon, which makes it so the Mimic Tear will be holding a different weapon to you. The same goes for armor, so whatever you've got equipped at the time you summon it is what it will be wearing. And that's how you can kind of customize what the Mimic Tear goes into battle. Battle with. To get the Mimic Tear Ash, go here. You can also click the video above for a more detailed run through of how exactly to use the Mimic Tear Ash and get the most out of it. So that's going to do it for this list of the best Spirit Ashes in Elden Ring. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know how you get on with those. And if you've got any summons I didn't mention in the video, feel free to let me know in the comments as I would love to try them. For more Elden Ring guides, subscribe to the channel.